Hey, it's a wealthy expat here in Cluj Napoca in Romania, in Eastern Europe. And I traveled on my St. Kitts passport to Romania. I wanted to test it out as a second time trying to fly on my St. Kitts passport to show you the process of traveling on a citizenship by investment passport, specifically a St. Kitts passport. How do the border guards look at it, what is the experience, how are the layovers, what is actually arriving in a new country on an empty passport that maybe people don't even know what that country is. I'll tell you all about my experience flying to Istanbul, doing a layover in Istanbul for five hours, and then flying to Romania and finally arriving here in Cluj Napoca. So just to give you a little bit of a background, I actually tried to fly my St. Kitts passport back in December. I got the passport in November in my hands. So I tried to fly the month after to Poland, but unfortunately, Poland had a travel ban on many countries outside of the EU. And one of those countries that was on the ban was St. Kitts and Nevis. And the country that was not on the ban was the United States of America. I flew on my two passports, the US and the St. Kitts, and I was actually able to enter Poland on my US passport, not my St. Kitts passport, unfortunately. So I couldn't get a stamp then. Now I tried to come back to any other country from Dubai. So I flew from Dubai to Istanbul in Turkey. I spent five hours in Istanbul. They did not stamp my passport because it was just a layover. And finally, I arrived here in Cluj, Napoca, Romania. And finally, I got a stamp on my passport on the first stampable page. You can see it right here, Cluj, Napoca in Romania. So I lost my passport virginity in Romania and I finally got a stamp on it. Essentially, how did the process go from flying from your home, let's say the place where you actually get your passport, in my case, Dubai, to flying to another place. Essentially, in the beginning, when I was at the gate to fly to Istanbul from Dubai, there was no questions asked. I just basically gave them my passport. They looked at it for a little bit. They saw, okay, this is an empty passport. That's a little weird, but it's fine. They put it in their system. They gave me back the passport, and that was pretty much it. In order to get out of Dubai, I need to get out on my US passport because I have my visa on my US passport. I did it two years ago, so I had to actually get a visa on the US passport, not the St. Kitts one. So to get out, I didn't show my St. Kitts, I showed my US passport. Once I arrived in Turkey, in Turkey, they didn't ask me anything. They didn't ask me, I didn't go through border guards, I didn't do anything because it was just a layover, waiting, working a little bit at the lounge, and then going to the gate to come here to Cluj Napoca in Romania. And that's when the questions started. When I was at the gate to come here to Cluj Napoca, they basically asked me, do you need a visa to go to Romania? I said, no, on a St. Kitts passport, I don't need a visa, it's visa free. And they did not believe me that I didn't need a visa because they never saw this country ever before in their life. And the guy looked at me like, you don't need a visa? Seriously, like a visa authorization or something? No, it, it's visa free. You can go 90 days to Romania without a visa. So he looked it up in a system, St. Christopher and Nevis. It was so funny how it popped up like St. Kitts and Nevis and all the visa requirements for Romania, for Turkey, for the Schengen area, all this. Romania is obviously not in the Schengen area. So you have 90 days out of every 180 days in Romania, plus 90 days out of every 180 days in the Schengen area. It is part of the EU, but not of the Schengen. So basically you have 90 days in every 180 days. And that's what the system said. So then he asked me, do you have any other passports? And I said, well, yes, I have another passport, but I don't want to use it. And then he called his boss and the boss came over and said, do you have any other passport? I said, yes, I have a US passport, but I don't want to use it. And she said, we still need to see it. So that was a funny experience. Why did they still need to see it? So I showed it to her. I always travel on my two passports just in case I'm, a, I'm prepared, just in case anything happens like the time in Poland. She saw my US passport, looked at it for a little bit and she said, okay, it's all good. Don't worry. You have visa free on both passports. You're fine. So that was fine. I think they just never saw St. Kitts before and they didn't believe that it was actually a real citizenship or a real program or a real place. And then they also saw in their system that I had a US passport. Probably that's what happened. So they asked me, okay, do you have any other passport? Show it. All right, you're good. Then I got on the flight. I got to Cluj Napoca here in Romania. And that was the even more fun part. So I got to the border guard and the border guard basically looked at my password and she had this confusion in her head. I think she never saw this country before. Not many St. Kitts citizens are traveling to Romania, I assume. So she thought it wasn't really a real country. So she asked me, is this a real country? And I said, yes, it's a real country. It's in the Caribbean. It's a new passport. She said, yeah, I know it's a new passport. So then she started looking at it. She looked at her system for about two to three minutes, looked at my face, looked at her system, looked at my face, looked at, my, at the system. And then she started asking me a ton of questions, which I'm not used to traveling on a US passport, which was, where do you live? What's your address in the place that you live? Can you show me a residence permit? 
of the place that you live. So I did, I showed her my residence permit in Dubai and my visa and everything, and she accepted that. And there was a little slight problem that on my residence permit, on my Emirates ID in Dubai, it says United States of America, and I was traveling on a St. Kitts passport. So she was a little bit confused on that. She didn't ask me for my second passport, but she basically was a little bit confused at that fact. And then other questions like, where are you staying in Romania? What are you doing in Romania? Basically, I'm just visiting Romania, exploring a little bit of the country, doing some snowboarding, skiing, and so on. She asked me a bunch of other things. How long are you staying? Can you show me your return flight ticket? Can you show me this different things? So she basically asked me about 20 to 25 questions about what I was doing in Romania, why I was here, and basically how much time I was spending in the country, which I wasn't used to because usually on a US passport, they just ask you one or two questions, unless you're going to a place like Israel, where they ask you a bunch of questions, or Japan where they ask me a bunch of questions. Apart from those two, other countries don't really ask you that many questions. When you're traveling on a pretty big country passport like the US, Canada, Australia, and so on, when it comes to saying kids, they do ask questions because they don't even know where the country is. So she asked me even, where is it? And then I showed her the little map here because St. Kitts does have a map on the first page that you can show exactly where the country is, what the country is all about, and so on. So that was a funny experience. Then the even funnier part, was when she was gonna stamp the passport. So she basically took my passport, it was the first page, she looked at the first page, put her stamp on top of the page, looked at her system, looked at my face, took the stamp out, looked at her system for about a minute, looked at my face, then put the stamp back in, and then stamped it. So I, th I thought for a second she was not gonna stamp the password, so I got a little bit freaked out, but then she actually stamped the passport and I was on my way. She gave me my passport and I entered Romania on a St. Kitts and Nevis passport. So overall, it was a smooth experience. There wasn't any problems like, hey, sir, you need a visa or hey, sir, what are you doing in Romania? You can't be here or something like that. It was just questions and curious people during the journey. And because I have two passports, I haven't renounced my US passport yet. They did ask me to show it specifically in the gate in Istanbul to go to Cluj-Napoca. So whenever you're flying on a citizenship by investment program, just expect a lot of questions. People don't know what this country is, unless you're flying to the UK or a country that, you know, a lot of people travel through or just people from St. Kitts, they tend to travel to, you're pretty much gonna get a bunch of questions because people are curious about this country. They don't even know if it's a real country or fake passport or something like that. And one question that I did not get that I really don't know how to answer, and I'm a little bit afraid of getting that question when I'm traveling on this passport is, how did you get this passport? It's a new passport. I don't look like I'm from St. Kitts, or at least I don't look, if people know what St. Kitts is, they know that I don't look like I'm from there. So I might say, okay, I bought a property in that country and I got the passport, or I applied for it, or I invested to get it, or I have descent from that country. So I'll let you know when I figure out an answer for that question, but that is a question like, how did you get this passport? because you don't look like you're from St. Kitts, did you buy it? And if you say, I bought this password, they might think, okay, you bought it illegally or you bought it under the table or something. So I'm still trying to figure out an answer for that question. Gladly, I did not get it on this trip. Overall, a very smooth experience, apart from a couple of questions and basically people being curious about what is this country? Is it even a real country? Do you have visa free travel to come to Romania? And just interesting questions because they genuinely don't know unless they look it up in their system. So just expect that if you're getting a citizenship by investment passport and actually using it to travel and go to different countries, because you have 160 something countries that you can travel on these passports. They're really good travel documents, but you're gonna get a lot of questions because people don't know what the countries are. So that's basically the summary of my trip. If you wanna get a second passport for yourself, you wanna go through citizenship by investment or go to a country like the United Arab Emirates in Dubai and lower your taxes legally, I help you with my wealthy expat company. We have a team of over five people now and we actually help you throughout all of the process, setting up companies abroad, making sure we lower your taxes legally, get a second passport, get another residence permit, click that first link in the description, book a one-on-one -on -one call with us and let Let's see if we can help you and see what strategy you need in order to build your freedom plan all over the world. Go ahead and click that first link and check out the video that's gonna pop up right here. Why I pick St. Kitts as my citizenship by investment country. There's a lot of different countries out there that offer citizenship by investment. Why I pick St. Kitts specifically. Check the video right now. Subscribe, hit that notification bell, that like button down below. I will see you on the next video. This is The Wealthy Expat in Romania.